hotel, sitting on the banks of the Ganges in Haridwar and listening to these chants. All you can see is a mesmerizing sight of hundreds of lamps lit up and pundits offering prayers to the most sacred river in the Hindu mythology. People pray their hearts out with the belief that Ma Ganga would listen to all their griefs and sorrows. A strong bond of faith exists much beyond the understanding of scientific logic and reasoning. People pray their hearts out with the belief and offer loads and loads of flowers into the Ganga as, a, as their sentiments. The 2500 kilometer long river has touched the lives of innumerable people in uncountable ways. It has also been considered as a Tirtha, which means a crossing point between Earth. Now, despite of being such an indispensable part of our daily lives, what is disheartening is to see that people not only discharge the waste, but are also polluting the rivers in the name of religious offerings. Devotees throw tons of flowers and other religious items into these rivers now, this religious discharge might sound like a very tiny speck as compared to the hundreds and hundreds of tons of industrial waste that goes into it. And I'm sure everyone sitting here might be thinking, Sula se to kuch nahi ho sakta. Sab natural hai. But as a matter of fact, it contains certain elements of pesticides that harm the water body and causes death to the fish species and even threaten the humans. The religious discharge might sound like a tiny speck but according to the study conducted by the UN, it amounts to 80 lakh metric tons of flour waste that goes into these rivers annually. And this amounts to a whooping 16% of the total population caused in the rivers. Sadly today, Ganges is the second most polluted river in the world. And with the enormous pollution levels, diseases like cholera, diarrhea, and hepatitis still continue to be the leading cause of child mortality death in India. Now, I'm sure everyone, as Unkar said, has had a zeal to make a change in that sphere. Please raise your hands. How, how many of you have? Everyone, right? Similarly, I also had that zeal. So when I returned to India after completing my master's, I joined my family business. It's a tradition in most of the Indian families where an elderly member visits a place of worship. Owing to my, similarly, my father used to visit a temple situated on the banks of the Ganges for the last 30 years. It was one of the oldest temple in Kanpur. Owing to his bad health, one fine day, I asked him to allow me to continue that tradition and he did not deny me. When I started visiting the temple, all I could see is innumerable people offering various forms of pujas ranging from small to big. And the pujas were so big that the flowers that they offered were worth lakhs and lakhs of rupees. Now, where do these flowers go and pile up? Has anyone wondered here? This is one of the site. This is just a part of it what we do. But these flowers are piled up outside the temple. And it's not just the flowers. It's mixed with plastic bags glass bottles, patals, broken statues of gods and goddesses, and many other things. So upon days of introspection or rather worry, a very pertinent thought stuck my mind. How can I stop people from offering flowers to the gods and goddesses? See, offering flowers has been a religious ritual in India, and we are doing our best to preserve it and increasing it day by day. We don't think of the society and the environment and the repercussions it causes. So, I have been discussing this problem with my friend come co-founder and we came to the conclusion that we cannot stop people from offering flowers. What we can stop is, or we can undo is, the repercussions to the society and the way we dispose the flowers. This is how the seed of Helpers Green was sown. Helpers Green was established with a basic idea of making religion sustainable. It is now a self-sustaining social enterprise that preserves the Ganges from becoming a religious sewer by, fl by flower cycling the waste from these places of worship and converting them into lifestyle products with the help of rural women and manual scavengers. Yes, manual scavengers. 
Now, before moving ahead, I would like to show a very small video depicting the concept behind Help Us Green. भगवान की फोटो होने से पूजा सामग्री ज्यादा बिकती बाकी सबसे पूजा का सामान है भगवान की फोटो है कूड़े में कैसे डालू नदी में प्रवाहित कर रहा हूँ So this is a part of it what we do. Second objective, the manual scavenger families. Now these women, these rural women are now a part of our, en our enterprise. This community is so disregarded that they are not allowed to enter people's homes and their children are not allowed to study in government schools. We wanted to undo this notion and wanted to build our enterprise with them and uplifting them in the process. As of now, we have 128 rural women who work for us for four hours a day. And, and the husbands now treat them with respect and dignity, which used to beat them earlier. Even the children earn by making these products, a major part of it goes into their elementary and vocational training so that they can undo their life and the lives to come ahead in the future generations. Now coming, now apart from the social causes, it would be very unfair for me if I did not talk about my personal motive in starting this initiative. Now how many of you are, are from a business class family? Most of it. So very common notion, parents want us to follow their footsteps, right? Yes. Similarly was my, my case. When I left my country for my masters, I was made very clear that family business was the only option for me and nothing else. I returned to Kanpur on 18th of September 2012 and on 19th I was at my dad's office trying to learn my inheritance. This really infuriated me and I'm sure all the Banas and Marwadis would agree. <laughs> that yahi kaam bacha hai mere paas karne ke liye and I, do, and I cannot do anything else because aap apne parents se poochho ke kya karna hai, they, they'll have just one answer my office, that's all. So I tried to convince my parents a lot, but it is rightly said that if you can convince your parents, you can conquer the whole world. <laughs> Similarly, when I asked my parents, when I had to start this initiative, their first reaction was, Kaam pe dhyan lagao, baaki faltu hain, aur startup sab bakwas hote hain. First reaction. And the best part was my co-founder's mother's response, अब तुम केचुओं की पॉटी साफ करोगे अपनी एमएनसी की जॉब छोड़ के बाय द वे ही ही वाज एन ऑटोमेशन इंजीनियर इन सेमांटिक कॉर्पोरेशन ही लेफ्ट दैट जॉब आर पेरेंट्स वर रियली हेजिटेंट इन टेलिंग एनीवन व्हाट वी यूज्ड टू डू इट वाज आफ्टर इन अगस्त 2015 व्हेन वी फर्स्ट पिच दिस आइडिया इन आईआईटी कानपुर एंड वी वन द फर्स्ट so will be successful. Ho hi jayega. <laughs> and, this has, and this is a notion in many of the families. Since then, our confidence grew. We kept pitching, winning, 
and their confidence grew day by day, so did ours. We broke past the simple basic business class notion that small initiatives like these exist and can prove wonders in the ecosystem. I believe that the young eager minds sitting here today have innumerable ideas which can change the way we look at the world. I believe we can make our ideas possible if we have the power in our dreams and in our ourselves. It would be very, I mean, if we can make the world sing along that control plus Z is definitely the option for us if we have the hope, the confidence and the grit to make it. We all remember a, a small nursery rhyme, we shall overcome. Who all remembers it? Bachpan se sikhaya za raha hai, we shall overcome, right? But as we grew up, the societal pressures creep, kept creeping in. And we were taught to imitate others' success. The best part is, Sharma ji ka ralka top, top karta hai, tum kyo nahi karte ho? Irrespective of what my zeal to do is, I have to follow his footsteps. I believe if we have the if we have a positive feeling in ourselves, we can make changes, and we can create something new, something so unique that would make people ask, "How could you make it possible?" At this point of time, we have become the, a Xerox copy of each other, trying to imitate success. But if success was so easy, then everybody in the world would have been successful and success would have been a constant phenomenon. If the Wright brothers didn't think beyond, we wouldn't have had aeroplanes in the 19th century. Be the Wright brothers of your life, create your own wings, and in the process, just remember one thing, yes you can, yes you can. Thank you.